Attention! Go! sounds of the eights accelerating there and the b crew and the a crew from ul the b on the left the a on the right and they're away very very strongly yeah both crews up to speed really nicely i actually really like the way that both crews built those first few strokes in an eight getting off the start can actually be sometimes a bit of a pickle and some crews just get wheel spin and get into a bit of a, an odd rhythm but both these ul eights have really picked up the hull first big stroke getting onto the second and then they've come out to length so you can see that acre has already taken a little bit of a lead, about a quarter, half a length, just as they have a higher boat speed, staying nice and high on the rate before settling. Two really, uh, really impressive aids here, but I mean, if you're the B crew, you really have to take the race to the A crew. Presumably they know that there's a speed. I think they've been training separately, haven't they? So that this is a bit of a surprise to both crews. Tell us about that. Yeah, a bit of an insider information is that I think both crews wanted to have the last couple of weeks, according to uh, people inside uh, the UL club, just to have a little bit of time by themselves, just to see if they could stay away from each other to make sure they had a better race if they were meeting each other in a, in a semi-final like today. Um, one of the things, if I was in that B crew, I just want to make sure that I threw everything at it. I mean, they may be the B crew on paper, but it is two boats in a race. Anything can happen. And I'm trying to make sure that I get big boat speeds to start off with and really throwing everything at the A crew. But of course, if you're in the A crew, then you know that's the race plan of the B crew. And so in the A crew, you've got to raise your game as well. So up it goes. And, you know, the A crew have really blasted out hard looking at that um, strong lead. And they are now trying to break open to clear water uh, coming up to four or five hundred meters into the track here. So ULA closest to the picture, ULB uh, furthest from us. They're trying to paint the river purple today in the Ireland Student Women's Eights event. It's the first year of this event, we've seen some great racing from great squads and the strength of women's rowing at the top level here is really something to behold. I think it's just a fantastic advert, A, for women's rowing, uh, B, for the fact that, you know, Henley, we have these the equal number of male and female events now. Uh, and I think credit to UL, they've run a fantastic program in the last few years. I, I can remember when I was there back in 2000, I think it was six, seven, it was a sort of a men's squad and a few few female athletes at the top end, Jess Eddy, Fran Houghton, Katie Greaves, all these Olympians, which were fantastic. Um, but what the, the coaches there, so Hugo there has been doing a fantastic job, Brian before him, they've really developed this squad mentality this culture we kind of help each other out we train hard we work hard but we're there for each other and I think that that's a fantastic thing to see represented here by essentially 50% of the event in purple so University of London dominating the river and the a crew we can see there the back of uh, Georgia Hella Tim uh, in front of her Phoebe Snowden at two Amber Pierce at three Rhiannon Morgan at four, Emily Lindbergh at five, Isabel Powell at six, Georgina Robinson Ranger at seven, stroked by Flora Blake Parsons and Joseph Salter sitting in the Cox's seat in his third Henley, um, having been in the Princess Elizabeth, one of the most competitive uh, events, the Junior Men's Eights event here with Hammington School in 2018. Hot year there where St Paul's dominated uh, the race. We saw some of the St Paul's crews going on into other events here. Many of these women we hope will go on to compete many, many more, more years at Henley. And we've already seen that in the last sort of generation. We've had Emily Craig, we've had Charlotte Hodgkins, Burns coming through. Um, so we have that new generation of athletes stepping from these high-performance university programs like the Oxford Brooks is the University of London and stepping into that squad. Um, you can see that there's got you know 16 women here that could easily in the next few years be tapping on the door of that that Paris squad or even thinking ahead further to the Los Angeles Olympics in 2028. One of the things I noticed from the program here is the ULA crew has got 16 Henley appearances previously between them. The B crew has got a only two and that is what it's all about is it that experience breeds confidence breeds racing ability breeds an ability to support your colleagues in the crew absolutely and I think that the the thing that's almost unsaid is that that experience is, is very hard to measure with performances but once you've been there once you've felt that and you can almost have that kind of uh, sense of confidence that you can do it it just really stands you in good stead for, for race day because you can have the all the ergos in the world you can have all of the seat races in the world but you have to deliver on the day that's what win Olympic that's what wins Olympic medals and that's what wins Henley championships so these shots allow us to have a look at the technical um, skills of this ULA crew as they sit in a comfortable position in the lead the stroke rate's gone down but they're still pushing the water very nicely past levering the boat past the water as they lock in there let's just have a look what are we seeing technically here Cal? yeah so i think the eight is, is rowing really nicely obviously they've, they've taken the rate down there they've got 
um, a nice bit of clear water on their B cruise. They want to make sure that they're sharp with their quick paddling up sort of like high 20s, low 30s, but they want to make sure that they're um, still rowing in a really good pattern and good uh, technical um, way of rowing. If we look to the B crew, I think they're do still doing a fantastic job. Those oars are really smashing into that water, getting nice, clean, crisp catches and making sure that they get as much boat speed as they can. Little fact there was that actually that that hull they're racing in is the 2012 Women's Olympic 8. So the boat there is, uh, has been at the Olympic Games uh, on Dorney Lake. Well, well, that's something to give you a lift as you sit uh, in the Henley course here. Henley, of course, is where the Olympics took the distance from, right? The 1908 and 1948 Olympics here. Um, that set up the 2,000 meter standard distance. Now, in 1924, the stewards actually dug out a bit of a wider channel to the side of the island, and that's given us the straight course here, which is what we enjoy. Uh, this unique two-lane straight course, 24 meters across, wooden booms all the way down. That gives us this incredible and unique atmosphere here. Such an iconic location, such an iconic day even on the Saturday, the Sunday of Henley. That's where you want to be if you're a domestic level athlete or even an international ath level athlete coming back to Henley Regatta. Um, I think that it's fantastic to see ULA and ULB both paddling as fast as they possibly can. ULB trying to get as much boat speed so that they can push back and make that margin of victory as small as possible or even trying to get back into the race to get onto that A crew. Yeah, there's Amelia Crocker in the stroke seat, 21 years old, of the B crew, stroke the UL women's second eight for the 21-21 regatta season. She's got some real experience in the stroke seat, but, I mean, today for ULB, this is about experience. Uh, the first Henley for all but two of these young women, and we're sure there'll be many more Henleys. And one of the great things about this new event camp, which is the island event, the student women's eights event, is new. Some of these women have raced before in the Remen, the open event, and this opens up more opportunities to compete. The open event really is there for any international crew. We see national teams all the time coming to compete here. So this allows top class women the opportunity to compete and win at Henley in a new category. You can see the strength here from this A crew. It's fantastic to see that pathway being given um, to women rowers. And I think that this is going to be a really strong event for years to come. Uh, I hope that we see more and more foreign and international crews coming over to really challenge these top UK crews. Um, but what a great year, what a fantastic event, and what a boat club to put on at Saturday semi-finals at Henley. So it's purple versus purple, and the A University of London crew crosses the line first, eases their oars and drops into the water, and then they cheer the B crew across the line, and that is why we row. A club with incredible spirit cheering on the B crew who return the applause and celebrate the fact that University of London have painted the river purple this afternoon.